Hey, what's up? This is uh, Shannon Gross, host of uh, Hanging with the Boys on DallasCowboys.com, and we've got very special guests, former Dallas Cowboy, Dancing with the Stars, <laughs> I mean, do it all. Demarcus Ware, how you been doing, man? I'm pretty good, man. Uh, with this quarantine, it's a little different now having to stay in the house and being an outdoor person. I know there's a lot of people that feel the same way, so it's been crazy, but, you know, you get a little more family time, get to hang out a little bit, uh, enjoy the fam. Yeah. Do more people recognize you now from Dancing with the Stars or from football? You know, uh, from Dancing with the Stars. Uh, a yeah. lot of people actually, yeah, they come up to me and uh, they're like, hey, Demarcus, I remember you as uh, uh, Chocolate Thunder. Oh, what? <laughs> like, yeah, sort of like uh, Chocolate Thunder from uh, Dancing with the Stars. And I'm like, okay, well, uh, you know, I always try to give them tips or whatever when it comes to uh, dancing. But then they're like, you know, they go straight to the Dallas Cowboys, right? They go, you know, you play for America's team, man. You were a badass when you played. And, I, and, and that makes you feel good, too, knowing that the work that you put in really uh, resonate with a lot of people. Yeah, so when people recognize you from your football life, they, they identify with Cowboys more than Broncos when they see you out in public? Yeah, I mean, because I played with the Cowboys for, for so long, and um, especially me living here in Texas. But if I leave out of Texas now, you know that there's a lot of Denver Bronco fans that are out there, and uh, and they, no matter what a championship is, a championship. And people, they remember that. So uh, I think it's both sided, man. It, you know, it's from the Dallas Cowboys and the Denver Broncos, but it was great to play for both of those uh, teams for sure. Yeah, I saw you. Uh, I saw you. Your little chat with uh, Peyton the other day on on your Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Who uh, who from the Cowboys and who from the Broncos do you stay in touch with the most these days? Uh, like now it's more like Brady James. I see him all the time. Uh, Aiken Adele, Jason Hatcher, uh, Stephen Bowen. I talk to Witten sometimes. Romo sometimes depends on uh, just where they are. And right I you know those two busy guys. Um, a lot of uh, you know, I talked to Tyron still uh, right now. Uh, a couple of, like Demarcus Lawrence, uh, a lot of the former and, you know, active Cowboys. But, you know, it's it's always been like fraternity playing with those guys. And so you talk to each one of them every once in a while, depends on what city you're in. So if I go to a city, I'm like, are any of my boys, I hit them all up, like some type of group chat. I'm like, hey, are any y'all of y'all here? Right now, and they they chime in and be like, "Hey, let's go have dinner. Let's have lunch." So it's pretty cool. Yeah. What do you think about the uh, the off season, the coaching moves, uh, head coach on down to assistant coaches and, and position coaches? What do you you think they're heading in the right direction? You like the moves? What do you think about all that? I think um, the team has always been a solid team, and uh, sometimes you can get used to the atmosphere and what all the coaches bring. And um, I think that change is good. I don't know specifically on every single coach but uh i know mike mccarthy you know he's won the super bowl he know what it's like to to bring a team that's already mature and nurtured to a point to where now they can really get over the hump get into the playoffs and win you know football games he's been there before and uh he you know a lot of the staff is gone new strength coaches from all the way to maybe media staff i don't know for sure but i think change is good when um, the team accepts it. And I know that a lot of the guys are going to accept um, the new change. I mean, every year there's what, almost 30 or 40 new guys coming in from the draft. So change is easy for all those guys. So uh, I think this year here is a good move for the Cowboys. Yeah, when you were when you were with the Cowboys, you guys were so close. I mean, y'all had y'all had yeah. the team. Yeah, man. Day, and that, that still haunts you till this day. There, is there something when you went to to Denver? Is there one thing that's that's you know when you're that close, you have the talent, you have the guys. Is there some it factor you always hear about? You know, mentality or locker room or anything like that, or is it just you know just really the way that the cards play out and the way it unfolds? Or is there something that just clicks on championship teams that make them championship teams? You know what, what clicks with championship teams, and I learned that when I was up in Denver, is it clicks in the offseason. It clicks in the OTAs and the mini camps and the training camps and times like this so where guys are quarantined, even like when we had you know, lockout times. Um, how 
well we talk, how well we communicate, how well we still have that mentality. It's almost like what you build in the off season carries you through the season when there's a lot of ups and downs and you lose a couple of games and that it factor is built during the off season. And I, I felt that really close um, knit group with a lot of those young guys. Um, Cause I know when I played with like Jason and Romo, we had like Larry Davis and Marion Barbarian, Terrell Owen. It was so many, I mean, just think about the guys I'm just naming right now. We had almost what, 16 pro bowlers one year. But the thing is we were all chiefs. We were all chiefs and there were no Indians willing to listen to what the whole plan was because everybody wanted to be the star at the time. And what I realized is the more time I spent with a lot of those young guys, when I first walked into the locker room, there was like music and all this stuff playing. And they had video games and they were playing pool. And I'm like, why are they playing around? But through that, you get to figure out like what makes the guys tick. Also, what brings the team camaraderie together in the workplace became our home. We brought the wives or the significant others, their families, and it got to a point to where that same mentality carried over into a football game to where when you look at that guy beside you now, you know why they're playing. You know they're like, like almost like why they're there. And it makes you play harder for those guys in those hard times because it's not about a check. It's about that mentality of why they're doing this, why they're beating themselves up. And um, it's, it was one of those things where during that Super Bowl year, like we knew we couldn't be stopped. If we lost the game, we're like, okay, cool. We forgot about it. And that next game, we crushed people. It was like, correct what we need to correct. And we would stay um, at the facility, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock. Okay, cool. Some of the wives will get mad. The significant others will get mad. But guess what? We'll bring them in and we'll have dinner. We'll have babysitters there to make them feel and let them know that they're important too. And that's where a lot of that stuff was missing when I was with the Cowboys because a lot of us were married. You know, when we left, we left the facility. There was no more talking anymore. We didn't talk to each other. But if we had that, I feel like that would have brought us a lot closer together in those hard times because we made it close every single year. We were close, but not close enough. Right. And, uh, that's that, that's what I feel was missing. Yeah. This is, you knew you had the team when you were in Dallas. Yeah. When you were in Denver, as you were going through it, did you have the, did you know that you had the team or did it just kind of, keep building and keep building and you were like wow we're we're going to the super bowl like we can do this thing like you you know what's so crazy man every year like you you feel like you have the team right from all the guys that come in but you're like man i mean we're, we're missing a free safety or we're missing a, a left tackle i mean i don't i mean he's giving up like four sacks every every day in practice but when i was with the cowboys there was no missing pieces there were no missing pieces when it came to talent. Guys that were the best at what they did. But we were missing, again, that, that team, total team mentality. But then I go to the Denver Broncos, and guess what? It was bits and pieces of a lot of good stuff, but we figured out how to make it all go together. And that's what made it work. Because it would be it would be a point to where, you know, we had a left tackle and the third string left tackle is in the game and we're like, okay, cool. What we have to do is make sure now we um, let's say we can't run the football, right? And he's chipping the whole game. He just took on his responsibility on what he needed to do to win the football game, knowing that you know what I'm probably going to have a 20 yard game. They're probably going to say I'm not, you know, our run game sucks. But guess what? He'll take that grit whole team would take that grit knowing that we won that football game because he actually instead of worried about how many, he had, how many touchdowns he, he have this game and just worried about the responsibility. 
Yeah, that's that, that's interesting, man. So you brought up, um, you know, when you're on a team, what what sometimes what teams are missing. Yeah. Looking from the outside, you keep up with the Cowboys. Obviously, you live here. You're you're in touch with a lot of the guys on the team. What what do you think they're missing right now, or or what pieces are they missing to to actually make a run in the playoffs and get to a championship game? They aren't missing any pieces. They're missing the mentality. They're not missing any pieces when it comes to a position of we have to have this guy. They have all of the guys. They have everything. But now it's like, what mentality are you going to build this offseason, a new mentality? Because every season is a new season. It doesn't matter if you win the Super Bowl or not. What mentality are you going to build this offseason to where when the first play of the football game, like you know that we put so much work in this offseason mentally, that the physical part comes natural. It comes natural for the next man. It comes natural for what you're doing. And that mentality through the season can't be broken. There's, there's, I like the teams that bicker amongst each other because they're being honest with each other. I don't, I don't want to say, you know what, I'm afraid to talk to the, the quarterback. I'm afraid to talk to the running back. No. We were at a point where, like, you know what, you suck. You suck this game. And what you need to do is pick up your pieces. And the guys accepted that. Like, really blunt. They accepted that. They were bickering even between the coaches of, you know what, my guy should be doing this. Your guy should be doing this. It started from the top. There wasn't a guy that was over any guy. Everybody was a team. And we all bickered amongst each other to get to one thing, and that was a championship. Man, that's interesting. So what are you what are you doing these days? I know you're, you were not able to get out and do – I hear you picked up golf when you're able to get outside. <laughs> yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Um, I actually um, – well, it's been like a month now. Um, I've been trying to be an avid golfer for almost three years now, so I built uh, this simulator in the house. I'm actually at the Colonial uh, Country Club – uh, right now here at the house, and uh, I feel like I'm outside, so I play a different golf course uh, every day. But um, this has been great, man, just to be able to have something like this. I know everybody's not as fortunate uh, to be able to get outside and do things, but the thing is when the sun's out, I always say the gun's out. So it's like get outside and uh, have a little fun. And, uh, you know, my family, you know, they're here and able to spend a lot more time with them and, uh, and still get that work in, man. Yeah, you, you're one of those guys, like you were a beast on the field and people that, you know, probably that weren't around you don't know, like you're legitimately one of the nicest humans in the world <laughs> and you're, you're into everything. Like you, your major was, uh, is it computer science? Yeah. Is that what you majored yeah. in in college? Mm -hmm. You grew up in Alabama, you know, yeah. I, I, I'm from Louisiana, so it's always Louisiana, Mississippi, and Arkansas, and Alabama. SEC, you know that. We're always competing for last place. Yeah, something. yeah. Except sports. We're good in sports. Exactly. Um, were you always, you know, dancing with the stars, football, computer science, You're now you're into golf, you're into all that. Were, as a kid growing up, were you always into different things, or is that something that just happened once you got older and, and had access to different things? You know what I – um, it's always been like – the more I can impact myself mentally, the better I can have a physical um, outer appearance, right? And what I mean by that is like, if I can feed myself and be a Renaissance man and figure out how to do some of everything, um, I can have a better result in what I'm trying to accomplish. And like, even like just the fitness stuff in general, like just playing football, I was in the weight room twice a day, two hours a day, lifting the house, right? Lifting the gym. And now I have an opportunity. I was a captain for almost 12 years. I have an opportunity to be a, a captain in other people's lives right now through fitness. Not just affecting people just in the stadium, the fans in the stadium, but also the fans outside of the stadium living uh, like a healthy lifestyle, motivating them. And that's why, I mean, you see me doing like so many of these workout things, and that's what I enjoy doing is – making myself feel second to give somebody uh, a feeling of fit, feeling like first to create some type of change in their lives. 
And um, it's been great, just this whole fitness journey I've been going through. And I know I talked to you, I think it was like three months ago, I was telling you I was about to launch some programs called uh, Driven to Win. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, should I do it? Should I not do it? Because there's a lot of people at home that still need to be motivated from their houses. And you can still do a lot of the uh, performance stuff from home. And, uh, and, I, and I told myself that, you know, if you launch this product, it's called Driven to Win. And it gives people just an opportunity to shed some light on, you still have that mentality of being an athlete, right? You know, you know, you, you, know, you got the backyard guys that still want to go and play. You have the women that hope, or were hopeful saying that they want to play volleyball, softball, or whatever it is. But it's that mentality of just getting out healthier, healthier you. So um, it's been fun, a fun journey for me. You can see me doing a lot of these Instagram lives. It's a challenge, man, to, to work full time, 35, 45 minutes just to start. And, uh, but it's been fun. Yeah, and you do, you do a lot of this on your Instagram story and your Instagram live. What's your, what's your Instagram handle where people can go check it out? Um, it's at driven to win um, because everybody has that driven mentality. And I tell them that if you can have that driven mentality, that can create some change in your life. And everybody have that. And that's all that matters. Once you wake up, if you have that, um, you're good. You're already blessed. So um, I think just that driven mentality that people have. And um, I've, I've been creating content for three years now. I haven't even launched it. Uh, i got a lot of things coming up in the future. Um, I can't wait to see what people um, think about it. But also what I've been doing, especially with computer science and you know software or you know, through gym stuff that I'm building here in uh, Texas. So I'm ready to make an impact, man, in another way. And, um, you know, people better get ready for it. And you've been doing some uh, some some of these Somebody live else. workouts. You're doing one tonight, right? It's, yeah. It's 6 o'clock? Uh, yeah, I'm doing one tonight at uh, 6 o'clock. I'll, I'll probably be here. I won't have the golf simulator behind me. But I, it's just like, you know, little weights, man, that I, I would have, especially with the home stuff now. I say I would probably use like a dumbbell, some sliders, or just some body weight type exercises. Or like I would walk down here to this little area. You know, I had to have my little man cave at the house. Let me show you here, man. <laughs> so I just uh, just with one of the rooms, and it is freezing out here. It's like forty-two degrees right now, but. See, it's outside. I try to swim a little bit, but the water is probably 30 degrees. But I'll come in here, and uh, you see, like, the cable cross machine, like, simple machines like this. I would have, like, a physio ball, like, stuff like this here, dumbbells, and then just cores, like the TRX machines, um, dumbbells, just the small things that people will have at home, just showing them they, they can still get out and exercise and have fun and uh, do what they need to do to still just get out and uh, live a healthy uh, lifestyle. So look forward to it. It'll be at 6 p.m. Uh, on the at Driven to Win handle. And uh, we'll have some fun. Hopefully all the Dallas Cowboy fans attend that and look at it and also uh, the Denver Broncos fans as well and everybody else. So 6 p.m. Central Time? Uh, 6 p.m. Central Time, yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah, y'all check that out. Yeah, uh, oh yeah. So how how are uh, how are the kids doing? They're doing good, man. You it's it's crazy because you go out and work, but now you're at home, and they're like, okay, well then um, we're going to throw this distance learning on you. And I'm okay, what distance learning mean? What virtual learning? So we're actually about three or four hours every day. We would either have like some type of Zoom call with the classroom go through all of their curriculum you know, throughout the week. And I have some mad respect for teachers. I'm talking about mad respect. And I didn't know that how emotional the kids can get if they can't do their work. <laughs> you know? But now you're a teacher, you're a parent at home, you got to be their playmate for recess, uh, everything. And uh, it, it's been a challenge, but it's been a good thing to spend more time with the kids, figure out what they're learning in school and how uh, awesome their school uh, curriculum is here in the state of Texas. And um, 
it's been pretty cool. So what's before we get off of this thing? I mean, it's we're gonna have to do this more often because oh yeah, anytime we talk to you, it's just like it's never enough time. We sat down, me and the crew <laughs> came out to do a little uh, interview with you for our our 60th anniversary yeah. content that we were doing, and we were planning on being there like tops 10 to 15 minutes, and I think we were there an hour, and it was just like we don't have enough. We can do this yeah, all. We got we gotta do more <laughs> of this for sure. We gotta do more of this for sure, man. So what's next for you, man? You're you're into the fitness, you're into golf, you're what is what is next? Is do you ever know what's next? Or is it just like you come across something you're interested in and you're like, I want to get into that. I want to see what what that's all about. You know, I go wherever God takes me. Um, I never know what's next, but I know that I've learned, you know, since I was I was younger that whatever comes your way, you do it the best of your ability, whatever it is, because you're gonna learn something from it. And it's going to help you uh, be a better you, a better person. So I don't know what's next, but I know that, you know, this fitness project is something I've been working on for a very long time. And I'm so gung-ho about it. And um, this is just a start. And you know me, my mentality is once I start something, I want to be the best at it. And that's just the bottom line, because if you don't have that mentality, why even do it? Um, so I'm, I'm excited, ready to have some fun with it. Um, and yeah, I know we're going to have some more interviews in store for sure, man, because I have a good time talking to you. That's awesome, man. Well, I appreciate it. I have a good time talking to you, too. So let's link up. Uh, let's link up soon. Check it out tonight, six o'clock on which handle is it? At Driven to Win on our Instagram. All right, man, go get in that. Uh, go get in that pool and see if you can. <laughs> man, it's freezing in there, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Demarcus, we'll catch up soon. Thanks for the time, man. All right, y'all take care. All right, thanks, man. All right.